Let's get to Biden and Trump agreeing to participate in two, not one, but two presidential debates. Now to politics as promised, and President Biden and former President Donald Trump actually in agreement on something, and that is the dates for two presidential debates. Like so much of this election season, those debates will be happening way earlier than usual, something both candidates, they agree on that as well. Ed O'Keefe is at the White House for us. He's got the details. Ed, this was a surprise. Good morning. Sure was, Tony. Good morning. But early voting begins in September in some states, and that's why both candidates wanted debates earlier. Trump has asked for even more debates, but the president's campaign so far has signaled he's only planning to do two. Make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. Two presidential debates now on the calendar. In a public back and forth, President Biden and former President Donald Trump agreeing to debate on June 27th and September 10th. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. And since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Biden's challenge to debate Trump comes as recent polls show the race stalled, especially in battleground states. But more concerning for the president, numbers show true weakness when voters are asked about how he's addressing the war in Gaza and the economy. I'm here. I'm ready, willing, and able. And the former president's used his brief appearances outside his criminal trial in Manhattan to repeatedly challenge Biden to debate. But he wants to go even bigger. I think there should be more than two, and I think they should be in large venues. It's just more exciting. The first debate will be held in the battleground state of Georgia, but without an audience. And the other will be a primetime face-off held in a news studio, instead of a debate stage. I am pleased to welcome you to this first presidential debate. This surprise arrangement likely spells the end of the nonpartisan commission on presidential debates, which has held them since 1988. And these joint appearances have a way of shaping perceptions about the candidates. Thanks especially to how they're joked about later. Governor Bush, strategery. <laughs> yeah, that's a great fucking, that's a great, great instance where the proof that you are showing immediately destroys the argument that you're making because that motherfucker became president. So all the memes about how stupid he is was completely inconsequential. Just saying. Lockbox. But the commission's 2020 debates drew criticism from all sides for being especially chaotic and contentious. Would you shut up, man? Contentious, as in Trump did almost execute Biden. Like, Trump did do an attempted assassination on Joe Biden, something that we forget about. He literally had COVID. He motherfucking had COVID, bro. He was. He literally was, he, he was sick. And he went up on that stage against an 800-year-old corpse. Just like <laughs> coughing in his direction and shit. Being like, hey, hey, shake my hand. Come on. I mean, I'm exaggerating. I don't think he did that. But yeah, it failed. Listen, who is on your list, Joe? This Who's is on your so list? Right. Gentlemen, is, I think this we've is ended so this. This is so Ed, I really didn't think this was going to happen. So what was it that brought both candidates together to say, Shake yeah, we're on board? Hand. <clears throat> Shake my hand, Brandon. If you're a real man, Joe Biden, you would shake my hand. With a debate now. Look, these guys both want to do this. They can't help themselves. The president eager to remind the country of the contrast between him and Donald Trump and motivate people. ABC will allow simulcast. CNN won't. Bad form, CNN. Very bad form. ABC will share the debate with other broadcasts and streaming news networks. The simulcast, CNN, has said only that its debate will air on its own platforms. Classic. I just keep repeating that over and over again with the hopes that people will also fucking feel that same way. Biden only looks like his mom says he looks good. And you know you're stoked about the debates? Oh, yeah, I am. People inclined to vote for but him. But let's finish this, and I'll, that we'll, side we'll cover side that contrast. in a second. The former president's been saying for months he'll debate anytime, anywhere. He also wants that contrast, hoping to reinforce perceptions about issues like the economy and take it directly to his opponent. And look, at a time when voters are saying either of these guys is too old to do the job, the other guy wants to show that they're quicker on their feet and will be able to withstand four more years. Tony. All right, Ed, thank you very much. So before we get to the Israel stuff, um, I saw that this was going on. 
and I had a statement about it. I said, I, for one, am excited to watch two 80-year-old men yab about a bunch of issues they almost completely align on with respect to policy while acting as though they're miles apart from one another. Aaron Rupart, liberalism's greatest soldier, actually hit me with a quote tweet and fucking hit me where it hurts. He said, Trump supports stripping bodily autonomy from women. Biden does not. Trump supports taking health care away from tens of millions of people. Biden does not. Trump wants to round up migrants and put them in detention camps. Biden does not. Trump's this part is a little bit, excuse me. What? That part's a little weird. Uh, Trump supports executing drug dealers. Biden does not. Trump wants to withdraw from NATO and form an alliance with Russia. Biden does not. I could go on. So what's really interesting about this take, some of the stuff that he's mentioning is just, you know, not even fair to bring up in this conversation, considering that uh, I, it's ironic because there are aspects of the Biden administration that is demonstrably better. Fango lives is correct. There are aspects of the Biden administration that is demonstrably better. It's ironic that he didn't mention them, though. Like, for example, not eviscerating federal agencies and actually utilizing them, which Biden has done. But these guys are so permanently warped in posturing against Trump brain. The problem with liberalism is that it is inherently reactionary. Maybe not as bad as like the actual uh, Republican attitude, but overall liberalism is also inherently reactionary as an ideology, which is precisely the reason why they always talk about the boundaries of what they are not, what they are up against. But slowly but surely, it literally, the things that you are saying that you should be voting for Biden for get smaller and smaller and smaller in that time frame. He didn't even mention any of the fucking good things that Biden has done. Things that I will readily admit and routinely talk about. In my tweet, I singled out immigration, Israel, Palestine, and tariffs. Those are the three key issues that Biden is 100% aligned with Trump on. Okay? And then I also mentioned one aspect that he's not aligned with Trump on, which is his most important key difference between him and Trump. Now, problem here is liberals don't even fucking know how to advocate for the Democratic Party correctly. Liberals also don't personally understand how politics is supposed to work. Liberals only operate on lesser evil voting. People do not care about lesser evil voting, okay? People do not think critically on many issues, and they especially don't th think critically on lesser evil voting. If you consistently advocate uh, on just how not as bad as the Republicans you are, you are going to whittle away all of the people that would readily vote for you. I mean, didn't we do that last election? Yes, we did do that last election. And notice, this is him, by the way. Wait, that's what Aaron looks like? Oh my God. Okay, something that I mentioned time and time again is a key principle in why people vote a certain way, okay? Democrats have completely lost touch with the reality that you are supposed to offer something to people, okay? Not just simply engage in a defensive posture. You have to offer them something, and then you have to prove to the people that voted for you that it was a good idea to vote for you. Engaging in pure team sports to say, like, no, it's, a, it's better if it's a D instead of an R that's doing the same exact initiatives, then, you know, it feels like your team won, and then you can own the fucking conservatives— is not going to be good enough to actually win elections consistently. The Democratic Party's platform that they advocate for across the board, if we look at it holistically, is still significantly better than the Republican Party's platform. The issue is that the Democratic Party rarely ever follows through on their agenda, consistently loses and says, oh, well, it's because of the structural hurdles that were placed in front of us, a thing that no Republican has ever stopped themselves from advocating for to a detriment mind you because republican politics and republican policy are both i mean republican politics is good but their policies are bad right and the democratic party's policies are supposed to be good but their politics are supposed to be bad republicans never fucking say oh man like mitch mcconnell never goes oh dude we have structural hurdles that's why we can't allow obama to uh, appoint a supreme court justice that's like that's not something that stops them okay they do their bidding for their most loyal constituencies, sometimes to a detriment to the uh, to the continuation of the, the party. Let's get back to the point of contention here, okay? So the Democratic Party 
is supposed to say, look, if you vote for us, we are not as bad as the Republican Party. We will, uh, we will scale back on the Republican Party's death and destruction. We will scale back on the deregulation. We will scale back on the environmental impact, the damaging impact on the environment as a consequence of deregulation and many other things. We will, uh, we will defend labor rights. We will defend workers. We will uh, create better economic opportunities, upward social mobility for some of the wealth, uh, some of the some of the least wealthy Americans, some of the poorest Americans. All that good stuff. We will protect immigrants. We will protect marginalized people, whether they're trans, black, brown, whatever, and also women's rights. We will protect women's reproductive rights specifically. Okay. These are the things broadly that the Democratic Party is advocating for as they position themselves as not the Republican Party. The Republican Party is advocating for the opposite things, right? However, back in the day, the idea was that if you voted for a Democrat, at least they would never champion the Republican Party's position on these issues, right? Nowadays, the Democratic Party doesn't even do the lip service. They just say, fuck you, vote for us, and that's it. And in that time frame, in that process, the things that they can point to get smaller and smaller and smaller as the daylight between the two parties and their policies actually reduce. In 2020, you could say, and the Democratic Party did say that all of the brutalization that you're seeing from the police against the free press all the brutalization that you're seeing uh, from uh, the police, Trump's police, against protesters, uh, we will never do that. That was a lie, as you can see clearly with what's going on with the pro-Palestinian demonstrations all around uh, college campuses all around the United States of America. They're beating the shit out of students. They're beating the shit out of teachers. They're beating the shit out of even the press. Another thing that the Biden administration said was we are not going to be like the Trump administration with their child separation policy and their immigrant detentions. We are going to be America is a nation founded on immigration. We are all descendants of immigrants. We are a wonderful nation. We could take care of all these people. We are going to do our very best to reverse Trump's policies on immigration. The Biden administration, on the other hand, literally continued Title 42. The Trump administration's only policy in combating COVID was Title 42, saying that the CDC thinks that these migrants might have uh, might have COVID, and therefore they can't come into the country in, a, in an effort to protect Americans from COVID while simultaneously denying COVID was real anyway. The, the, the Brandon administration continued that policy. The Brandon administration continued immigrant detention. The Brandon administration also... Four years after, it ran a successful campaign, mind you, against the Trump administration, saying that they were going to reverse in the first 100 days all of the Trump administration's immigration policies, turned around and advocated for the exact same bill that the Trump administration was trying to pass over and over again, funding the border wall, funding Customs and Border Patrol, and, and beefing up border security assuming that the right-wing framing on the issue of immigration was actually not one of, of you know, false economic, uh, like a, immigration has always been an economic issue. Um, still, falsehoods are, are presented in the conversation on the Republican front, and the Democrats are supposed to tackle it from the economic front and be like, no, they're not actually taking your jobs, yada, 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 right? But they dropped that completely and took on, they took on the framing that the Republicans were advancing, saying that, no, immigration is actually a matter of national security. Immigrants are violent. Immigrants are rapists. Immigrants are thieves. And what ended up happening is basically the same exact thing that you see all around the world. You see in Europe especially, that people are now more militant against immigrants than ever before, and the reason for that is because the Democratic Party has also given up on, on arguing on the real boundaries of this issue and arguing for real solutions to this problem. A problem that is born out of right-wing, white nativist, anti-immigrant sentiments. My point is, 
if you keep capitulating the right wing framing on issues, you're going to lose that issue completely. Because why the fuck would people believe you now that you've had an attitude shift when there are people that have been on the immigrants or rapist side with uh, clarity, with moral clarity for quite some time? All you've now done is say, no, they're actually right. I'm handing it to the right wing. They're correct. I'm the one who'll fix it, but the right won't let me fix it by being right wing. It is an idiotic bargain that is both bad policy and also even worse politics. It's something that, in my opinion, is, is completely unconscionable and also furthering the fascist agenda in this country. It is genuinely devastating. It is genuinely scary. And I cannot comprehend how any liberal doesn't see that fucking reality. The writing on the wall. Them's are bringing the border bill back to the forefront. That's great. Chris Murphy. Today, I'm reintroducing the bipartisan border security bill. It's not a bipartisan bill. It is a, it is a right-wing bill, by the way. It's only bipartisan because it's a right-wing bill that the Democrats are pushing for. It's insane to me that they're doing this again. It is very frustrating to see the Democratic Party do this over and over again, and only to have these people, only to have these fucking idiotic people defend this uh, silly notion. People do not vote on lesser evil voting boundaries. It is stupid, okay? And the expectation that, like, you are owed their vote as the Democratic Party is also stupid. The expectation that people, you are owed their vote and not vice versa is inherently undemocratic. Why the fuck do we have a democracy then? You have to fall in line and offer fealty to the Lord? To one lordship over the other? Okay, well, why do we have a democracy then? No, you're supposed to fucking earn our vote, man. And tax policy and union support and climate investment and agency regulations and judicial picks and protections for trans people and DACA protections and marijuana policy and student loan forgiveness and overtime regulations and cabinet picks and renewable interest. Exactly, that's why they voted in the first place. If you act out of line, you should be instantly ousted. Like, I don't even personally disagree with Hutch Hutchinson on this issue, uh, on, on some, right? A lot of this is just like a laundry list of things that he wishes the Democratic Party was doing, but there are some that the Democratic Party is like genuinely taking the initiative on, right? Union protection is being one of them. It's true. You're wrong if you don't think that the NLRB is not doing a good job. However, 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 the issue here is still the idea that people are supposed to come to these conclusions on their own when the Democratic Party is not showing them that they're doing that. Even if the Joe Biden administration was legitimately making uh, great initiatives on half of the things that he's talking about here, which, you know, half of them are not real, it is wild to me that they are doing such a bad job with their messaging. They have had zero fucking uh, policy papers on their website, on their campaign website. And I don't even know if they've changed that reality. Like a couple months back, they still had no policies on their website. Now, obviously many people are not going to go there and read that anyway. It's not going to move the needle, but it's good for people like Hutch and all those other people who want to dick ride the democratic party into oblivion to have the talking points. And the fact that they are not even offering talking points to their own fucking loyal Fedayeen is insane to me. It shows me that they are not interested in winning. Hodge is the perfect liberal, though. He claps for incrementalism where the next Republican will easily undo all this and undo even more. The ratchet effect is because everyone is a liberal. True progress takes a lot of fucking time to undo. Think abortion. It took decades. Yes. True progress and true regress, even though regress is easier than progress. The only thing that we do in this circumstance, the only thing that we do in this circumstance is just like allow the Republicans to be more and more right wing as we also become more and more right wing because we've created an environment where like right wing sentiment is the only thing that people hear. And, is, and that kind of attitude is completely normalized. It is crazy, by the way. The, the latest New York Times Siena poll showed that Biden is doing horrifyingly bad. Like, losing a fucking 12-point lead in Nevada, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Georgia, all these states where he's supposed to be dominating, with the exception of Wisconsin, is crazy. It's just so incredibly cooked. And so many of the... Uh, so many of the Democratic Party loyal demographics are literally just not voting for Trump. I mean, uh, just not voting for Biden.